Hello, Brenton with Allad Octane here. In this video, we are going to take a look at a 2022 Kia Sorento SX Prestige. All right, so we've got a 2022 Sorento SX Prestige front wheel drive. This thing is coming in at $43,000. $43,000? That's like Palisade level. That's Grand Cherokee level. And it's only front wheel drive. Although I don't know what the Palisade was, but I mean, it looks really cool. So take a look at this. That color is amazing. The accents are awesome. Really cool looking, but $43,000 looking? Ah, uh, um, hmm. Okay, let's find out. Let's go ahead and open this. All right, so this one does have a door. Normal latch keyhole is in there. I guess if you had to pop the door off, that is always a nice thing. Here we have a lot of the material on the door. Very nice. And, oh, that is kind of a nice metal plate with a nice grating. We're looking at Buick level there. So that's that's luxurious. That's nice. Looks like we have driver one and driver two. And this pole handle feels a little flimsy, but the switches for the doors aren't too bad. We have the mirror controls inside. Take a look at that interior. Fantastic coloring. Materials look very luxurious. So let's go see if a Kia is a luxurious. Actually, that's quite comfortable. Uh, got some headroom and the seat isn't too bad. Everything again is power, can't do that. We have a ton of screens. Looks like there might be a screen here. It looks like there's a screen here. Big screen here for infotainment. Might even have had a screen burn. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's kind of something there. Uh, all right, so we got climate controls. We got some switches for the climate controls. Maybe touch button, that must be why be why this is so expensive we got some storage down here we've got usb charging we've got the heated seats and cooling seat switches that are right here okay that can go closed or that can go open we've got two square looking cup holders and then like a change tray center console has a little thing that can be come in and out not too bad we've got drive mode dial which is cool we've got a shift boot that's very nice. I do like that feature. Uh, auto hold, I don't really know. That might be like a cruise control type thing. We do have some controls on the wheel itself, some upshift and downshift paddles. Turn signal stocks are actually very solid. I, I would definitely choose these turn signal stocks over a lot of the other ones that I've seen. They do feel quite well, quite sturdy. Uh, steering wheel has a good feel to it. That does have some toggles and switches. Both of these are both a toggle switch and a button. You can push that in and you can push it up and down. So that's kind of cool to know. It looks like it's a three-way button rather than just a two-way button or a two-way switch. This is actually really quite luxurious. Up top, we've got the mirrors, not too bad. It does have a light, maybe with even a dimmer on it, not quite sure. We've got the controls with some lighting up here. I think maybe it's just the fit and finish that make me make this a little bit more luxurious looking and feeling. It's got the sunroof. We've got other controls up there. I'm not quite sure what that does. I'm trying to see if there's any buttons on the mirrors. It doesn't look like there's any buttons on the mirrors. This will have a sunroof all the way through. It's probably where my height is coming from. It, it fits quite well. Line of sight, even though there's a hood in my way, isn't too bad. You can kind of see off the left and off to the right. This doesn't have too much in my way. So I can have a lot more space looking out here in my point of view. Again, looking out right isn't too bad either. The materials are very nice. It's got a nice pleatedness to it in terms of, though it does feel like it is vinyl. That is a nice touch. So we're gonna go ahead and head to the back to see what this is like in the back seat. I am sitting comfortably in the driver's seat. Again, all these cars I would definitely rearrange a little bit to just try to make sure I fit perfectly. But wow, straight up in the back here, take a look, cup holder right up front. Um, we've got some switches there. Pretty luxurious with these captain's chairs. This is not a bench seat, so let's take a look. We've got that. All right, I fit. Not the best, but not the worst. I These rear seats, why are rear seats up so high? That is kind of frustrating because I can't, get my head in. It does have a Bose speaker system. That is interesting. 
Uh, oh yeah, I guess I would have set it up there. I, I didn't, I missed it. We've got some controls down here. Everything is always so dark. I understand it comes up dark on the camera. There are uh, charging outlets here. I'm not really sure if there are controls for the HVAC, but it does have, maybe this is a screen where you can touch screen it, it that way. I don't know because there is no power, but they do have vents. Oh, there is a charge port here. That's kind of nice. So if you don't want to go all the way down there, you can come up here for the charge points. There are some nice seat back pouches. And there are some nice seat pouches here as well, which is really pretty cool. They've encapsulated the seat belt buckle into this little thing, which is kind of nice. This does have a third row. Guess where we're going? We're going third row. And I think I'm just gonna try to scoot myself in the back. Maybe not. Maybe I will bring the chair down. All right, let's see if I can get this down. All right, there it goes. So, okay, I guess that's as far as it's gonna go. Oh boy. Let's go up and over. I guess that's an advantage to being tall. I can go up and over things. So I'll scoot back behind this seat here in the third row. Basically just like the Outlander, I don't fit very well. Uh, the Palisade, same thing, third row, didn't fit very well. So third rows, what do you expect out of a six foot four person? I'm not gonna fit very well. Uh, it does have a couple over back here. It does have a charging port out here, some storage space here, and the same thing on this side. Here are the controls for the third row seats to move them. It does have a 12 volt outlet. I guess that would be more for the back or for here. It does have an outlet speaker system there. That's kind of cool. So how much storage do we have? Basically slim to none. We're gonna go ahead and head back to the back and take a look to see what that is like because we're gonna go out this side. Sorry about that. It does have a running board. That made it a little easier to get out, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's go to this Rento in the back. Oh, yeah, that is very little storage space. If we pull that up, we've got the jack and some cargo area. That's actually not too bad, fitting tools and stuff in there. But if you were trying to fit all uh, two, four, six, seven people, seven people in this thing, and then carry luggage on a long trip, unless they're children, no way. It does have a nice handle here to be able to get that. It's not obviously here. It's an actual full handle. You can get your whole grip around. It does have a lock button and a lift gate button, which is kind of cool. But again, overall for the price, again, this thing is sitting at $43,000 on a Kia Sorento. Uh, there are bigger vehicles out there, but again, that's going to be my preference. I'm a large six foot four person. If you're looking for a four passenger and maybe some friends on occasion for children, and then throwing a little bit of gear in the back on more often than not, and just having the third row folded down, this might be a good option, but it is $43,000. There are some cheaper options out there. So that has been my review. That has been my opinion. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Brenton with All Out Octane. Until the next one, have a good one.